J.C. Help, help. Oh! The Jell-O program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston and Phil Harris and his orchestra. The orchestra opens a program with I've Got a Heart Full of Music from Cowboy from Brooklyn. When your mother sat down to the dinner table back in the early 1900s, she was probably dressed in a stiff starched shirtwaist and a skirt with a hundred tucks. But when she brought on the dessert course, more than likely it was the same dessert that you and your family enjoy so much today, Jell-O. For some styles don't change, and Jell-O is still, as it always has been, America's favorite gelatin dessert. That name is a trademark, and it tells you what it told your mother, that here's one of the most delicious desserts anybody ever tasted. But you must be sure to ask for genuine Jell-O when you buy. For that name is your guarantee that here's the real thing, the one and only Jell-O. If you hear any other gelatin dessert called Jell-O, you'll know that is incorrect, for the name is the property of General Foods. So if you want to enjoy Jell-O's extra-rich fruit flavor, Jell-O's fresh, tempting goodness and gay, glowing colors, don't accept any substitutes for Jell-O. Yes? Yes? What's that? Now look, Mr. Hornblow, I know you're the producer of the picture, but I'm the star. And after all, I have some rights. All right, I'm stubborn, but I will not do that scene where I'm hanging out of a window upside down by my heels. Hmm. Imagine me hanging out of a window. I'm supposed to be a lover, not Monday's wash. <laughs> Now, look, Mr. Hornblow. Jack, Jack, we're on the air. The program started. I know, Don. I'll have to call you back later, Mr. Hornblow, but I want this thing ironed out or Mr. Zucker will hear this. Goodbye. Hmm, nothing but trouble. Go ahead, Don. Introduce me. Okay. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we bring you that happy-go-lucky fellow, that carefree comedian, that bubbling all personality. All right, all right. That's enough. Hello again. This is Jack Benny talking. I tell you, Don, it's enough to drive a man crazy. Well, what's the matter this time? The same old thing. Every time I make a picture, Paramount wants me to kill myself. Well, uh, why don't you do something about it? Do something about it? I've been walking around the studio all week with a sign on my back saying, Fragile. <laughs> but they still won't change the story. Say, Jack, is that the same picture you were rehearsing last week with Rochester? Yeah. You know, where he was reading Joan Bennett's part? Yes, Phil, but I had to give up reading lines with Rochester. Why? Well, we were commencing to sound like Amos and Andy. <laughs> anyway, fellas, I don't like the whole setup. I have to go through all sorts Hello, of... Hello, Jack. Hello, Mary. I have to go through all sorts of physical contortions. I have to jump over walls, fall down flights of steps, and worst of all, hang, hang by my heels out of a window. Gee whiz, Jack, you ought to have a double for those scenes. You know, a, a stuntman to take your place. That's what I told Paramount, but they claim it's too dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> I rehearsed that scene yesterday with Joan Bennett. You were there, Mary. I'll say. Now get this, Don, for a silly idea. Joan Bennett is passing by on the street, and I want to propose to her. So Paramount has me hanging out of a window upside down to do it. Fine picture. But you know, Jack, you look much taller when you're hanging by your heels out of a window. Well, no wonder my knees fly out of joint. <laughs> well, anyway, Don, I rehearsed that scene four hours yesterday, and believe me, I was all in. <laughs> Tell him what happened, Jack. Oh, it wasn't that important. What was it, Mary? Well, Jack was hanging by his heels upside down talking to Joan Bennett. Well, sure I was. That's what I was supposed to be. Was your toupee supposed to fall off, too? <laughs> Well, that was just an accident. No kidding, Mary. Did that really happen? Yes. Jack's toupee fell off and landed right on Joan Bennett's head. <laughs> <laughs> it did? Yeah. <laughs> she thought it was a spider and fainted. <laughs> and not only that, the guy that was holding my feet went out for lunch in the middle of the scene. <laughs> I fell right on my head. On your head? Did you hurt yourself? No, Don. I've always had a short neck. <laughs> I 
hurt myself. And Mitch Lyson, the director, he was a big help. He just stood there laughing at me. Oh, Mitch Lyson. Yeah. Say, he's a swell director, isn't he, Jack? Yes, but he's so temperamental. See, I made one little mistake at rehearsal the other day, and he bit me. <laughs> I tell you, fellas, someday I'm going to make a real picture and handle the whole thing myself. I'll be the star, the writer, the director, and the producer. You'll be the audience, too. <laughs> I don't know about that. My picture will do business if only my relatives go to see it. You ain't kidding. <laughs> well, anyway, I'm not going to worry about it anymore. They'll have to rewrite the story or else. Answer the phone, Mary. Okay. Hello? Who? Yes, he's right here. It's for you, Jack. It's Mr. Zipper of Paramount. That's Mr. Zucker. <laughs> See, I wonder what... Hello? Hello, Mr. Zucker. Yes. Yeah, but look, Mr. Zucker, all I said was I will not play that scene. Absolutely not. But I do want to make pictures. Gee, I even went on a diet. If you don't shut up, you'll stay on it. Quiet. <laughs> Now, look, Mr. Zucker, I'm the star of this picture, and I certainly have a right to discuss it. Huh. Why, even Washington didn't cross the Delaware without talking it over with someone. I said, Washington, I know he isn't in the picture. <laughs> now, now, Mr. Zucker, I'm the star, and if I'm going to fall out of a window on my head, i got to get more money or a helmet. <laughs> I'd like to get both. Well, how about my having lunch with you tomorrow and we'll talk about it? Oh, right after lunch? Okay, <laughs> goodbye. <laughs> what I have to go through to make a picture, I wish Baudville would come back, play Phil, the way I'm treated, no rights, no respect, no nothing. Phil Harris and his orchestra playing Jungle Love from the picture of the same name. And Phil, that was very realistic. I don't know, I could just smell the jungle. You could? Yes, I could smell the music, too. <laughs> I didn't mind the music, but how can you smell a jungle? The monkeys are wearing Christmas nights. Well, that's about the corniest routine we've done in a long time. <laughs> Yeah, to top it off, here comes Kenny. No, I'm cooked. <laughs> Hello, Kenny. Hello, Jack. How am I doing? How are you doing? You just got here. But you're looking good, Kenny. You got a sunburn and everything. Where have you been? Oh, I, I've been to Lake Arrowhead for decoration day. I just got back. Oh, oh. I took my girl and her mother. Gee, I had a swell time. You had a lot of fun, eh? Yeah. Her mother lost her glasses. <laughs> Oh, I get it. Did she find them yet? I don't think so. I dropped them in the lake. <laughs> Why, you little devil, you. Say, Ken, did you do any fishing while you were up there? Yeah, and a funny thing, Jack. Hmm? Everybody around me was catching trout and bass, but all I got was a barracuda. Kenny, a barracuda is a saltwater fish. What was he doing in Lake Arrowhead? I only catch them. I don't explain them. <laughs> A 
pond fisherman. You couldn't catch a herring in a delicatessen if you used Slepperman for bait. Oh, I could, too. Yeah. Say, Jack, did you go anyplace over the holiday? No, I had to stay here and worry about my picture. I wish I had it easy like you fellas, nothing to think about but have a good time. Well, if you'd relax a little more, you'd be better off. Oh. Every time you make a picture, you try to run the whole work. Well, Mary, I have to protect myself. After all, I'm the star. Star, star, that's all I've heard. Well? You're no more star than a $3 sapphire. <laughs> Is that so? Well, let me ask you something. When my picture comes out, what do you see on the marquee in front of the theater? Jack Benny and free dishes. <laughs> Well, if you can see me and pick up a soup tureen for the same price, I suppose that's bad. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Don laughed at that. Anyway, I'm the star. <laughs> so let's forget artists and models and get on with Tom Sawyer. And now, ladies and gentlemen, if you will overlook our silly arguments, we will present the third and final episode in the adventures of Tom Sawyer. Now, as you may remember, our play last week ended with... Oh, darn it. See who that is, Mary. Okay. Hello? Who? Yes, he's here. Who is it this time? It's Mr. Winkler. He says he's Joan Bennett's manager. Oh, I wonder what he wants. Hello? Yes, this is Jack Benny. What? Well, yes, Mr. Winkler, but I didn't mean that I was the only star in the picture. I know Miss Bennett is, too. What? Now, wait a minute. You've got the wrong slant on this, and I'm not a termite. <laughs> I don't care how I photograph. <laughs> but, but, Mr. Winkler, but, 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 but... Shut up, Jack. You sound like a motorboat. <laughs> well, all right, I apologize. Goodbye. The fine time to call me up and argue about billing. And now, folks, getting back to our dramatic offering, I will be the star of Tom Sawyer. There'll be no arguments about that. And Phil Harris will well, be... Well, say, Jack, I don't mean to keep harping on your picture, but are you really going to make them change the story? Yes, I am, Don. Why? Well, I was just wondering, uh, isn't there some place in the script where you can talk about Jell-O? Well, I don't know, Don. I would if I could find the proper place for it. If you... Well, uh, I just thought that while you're proposing to Joan Bennett, you could say something like this. Mm -hmm. I love you, Joan, because you're beautiful. And I love Jell-O because it has six delicious flavors. <laughs> Well, Don, I could, but that doesn't seem to be quite the right spot for it. Well, then, uh, Jack, take that scene where you're hanging out of the window upside down. Well, what about it? Well, couldn't you just have a couple of boxes of Jell-O fall out of your pocket? Look, Don, that scene is not going to be in the picture. That's what I've been fighting about. I'm not going to hang out of a window. Is that what they want you to do, Jack? Yes, and I'm not a chimpanzee. That I know. Does Paramount know? <laughs> Apparently not. I've got bars in my dressing room. <laughs> anyway, I'm not going to do it. But, Jack, I'd be a little careful if I were you. You're not so big that you can go around telling Paramount what to do. I'm not telling him what to do, Phil, but I'll be darned if I'll play a love scene upside down. The blood will rush to my head and I'll forget my lines. <laughs> if you haven't got any more lines and you have blood, don't worry. <laughs> Anyway, that scene is out, so for heaven's sake, let's get back to our own play. Now, Mary, you'll be Becky Thatcher again. And Phil, for the third consecutive week, you'll be my half-brother, uh, Sid, a big sissy. Gee, I wish that part would last one more week. Why? I'm making a doily, and it's nearly finished. <laughs> well, you'll have to finish it on your own time. Now, let's see. The part of Aunt Polly will be... Oh, heavens to Betsy. <laughs> Is that the phone again? Hello? Yes? Yeah. Oh, Jack, it's Mitch Lyson, your director. Well, I might as well talk to him, too. Hello, Mitch. Yes. Yes, and I mean exactly what I said. I'm not going to hang out of a window by my heels to play a love scene. I fell on my head once already, didn't I? Stop laughing! <laughs> what? I don't care if I do get the Academy Award. I still want a round head. <laughs> All right, tell Mr. Hornblow. See if I care. Goodbye. 
Well, if this isn't getting to be a joke or something, I tell you, I'm going nuts. Oh, Jack, let's do our play Tom Sawyer and forget all about it. All right, but I'm in a fine mess. I've aged ten years tonight, and I'm supposed to play a nine-year-old kid. Oh, well, sing your song, Teddy. Maybe that'll soothe me a bit and quiet my nerves. Okay, Jack. What's it gonna be? I'm going to sing Let's Sail to Dreamland. Now, dedicate it to the United States Navy. <laughs> I'd like to hit him with the SS Pennsylvania. I close my eyes and dream you are near me. I hate to wait, for day will take my dreams away. A paradise is mine when you're near me. My dreams live on, although it's gone. We'll find you gone. Let's sail to dreamland on a silvery sea. With love beside us, a dreamboat to guide us, what more can there be? Let's sail to dreamland. In the blue of the night The land of kisses Where heaven and bliss is And stars are so bright We'll build a love nest Just a cozy high above nest And stroll in stardust That falls just like a dew Let's sail to dreamland on a silvery sea Where dreams are making and romance is waiting for you and for me Let's sail away Let's Sail to Dreamland, sung by Kenny Baker. And now for our play, The Adventures of Tom Sawyer. As you may remember, in our last episode, Mrs. Newton, the school principal, had promised the children a picnic at the old Indian cave. And this is the big day. The scene is the home of Aunt Polly, where we find her getting Tom and Sidney ready for the picnic. Curtain may use it. Come on now, children. Hurry up. It's time for you to leave. I'm ready, Aunt Polly. I'm ready, Aunt Polly. You big gumdrop. You stop calling me names, Tom Sawyer, or I'll scratch you. Children. <laughs> children, behave. Thomas, did you brush your hair like I told you to? Yes, ma'am, I did. Well, then put it on and get going. <laughs> Now, I want you to be good little boys when you get to the picnic. Is your basket all packed, Sidney? Yes, Aunt Polly. I got my sandwiches, my milk, and a book to read. It's so thrilling. A book? What's the name of it? The Campfire Girls at the Cotton Club. <laughs> that sounds mighty interesting. Thomas, is your basket packed? Yeah, I got my peanut butter sandwiches, my jelly roll, my lady fingers, and a can of beer. <laughs> Let's see that. Why, you bad boy, you forgot your can opener. I don't need one. I got a buck, too. <laughs> Comes in handy, too. <laughs> All right, now. Now run along, both of you. And remember, be good little boys. Hello? Who? Yes, he's here. It's for you, Tom. A Mr. Hornblow. 
Hornblower. <laughs> Give me that phone, Aunt Polly. Hello, Mr. Hornblow. What? Now, wait a minute. I don't care what Mr. Lyson says. I'm not going to hang out of a window by my heel. Have you been in mischief, Thomas? Quiet, Aunt Polly. Well, go ahead and tell Mr. Zucker. I don't care. Hurry, Thomas, or you'll be late. Now, look, Mr. Hornblow, I haven't time to argue with you now. I'm going to a picnic. Goodbye. Hmm. They think they can bulldoze me into making that picture. They got another thing coming. Now, hurry, children. It's getting late. Okay, goodbye. Goodbye, Aunt Polly. Goodbye, Aunt Polly. Goodbye, Aunt Polly. You're as bad as Hornblow. <laughs> This is a fine play. Our audience won't be able to follow without a Ouija board. Quiet. <laughs> so Tom and Sidney go on their way, and a little while later we find them at the picnic grounds by the old Indian cave. The picnic is in full swing. <laughs> hey, Sidney, let go of my curl. I tag you in. <laughs> Children! Children! Not so noisy. And stop slugging each other. <laughs> It. Aren't we having the nicest time? I'm having a lovely time, Mrs. Newton. Gee, this food is good. Hey, look at Puddin' Head Wilson. He's got a 10 decker sandwich. <laughs> hey, Sidney. What? I'll trade you a big piece of custard pie for your ham sandwich. Okay, here's your sandwich. Thanks, and here's your custard pie. <laughs> <laughs> I told you I'd get you. Hey, Tommy, there's Becky Thatcher, your sweetheart, over there under the oak tree. Oh, yeah. Hello, Becky. Hello, Tommy. Tommy loves Becky. Tommy loves Becky. Becky loves everybody. <laughs> now, it isn't true, is it, Becky? You don't go out with other boys, do you? No, Tommy. Hey, Becky, can I hold your hand? Yes, Tommy. Can I put my arm around you? Uh-huh. Can I hold you tight and hug you? Yes. Yeah. Can I have some of your potato salad? What a cluck. <laughs> oh, I get it. You want me to kiss you. Huh? Gee, even I knew that. <laughs> Here you are, Becky. <laughs> wow, how was that? <laughs> I should have given you the potato salad. <laughs> well, you kissed me anyway. Huh? Tommy loves Becky. You ought to see the Becky. You better go down and save her. And Jello has six flavors. Cut it out. <laughs> Jello has six flavors. Say, Becky, I got a swell idea. Let you and I go over in the big cave. Huh? No, I'd be scared. They say the place is full of goblins and ghosts and all kinds of creepy spooks. Ah, oh, who's afraid? Come on, let's go. Hey, where are you going? We're going in the cave. You want to come along, Skinny? Sure. You won't be afraid, will you? Who, me? Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's nothing. Come on, both of you. Gee whiz. Becky, we ain't even in the cave yet. What are you shaking for now? My nerves are having a preview. <laughs> well, come on, let's go. And so Tom, Becky, and Skinny steal away and enter the old Indian cave. For hours, they wander deeper and deeper into its mysterious caverns. And now we pick them up. They're trying to find their way out. But they are lost! Gosh, this is awful. Hang on to me, Becky, so we won't stumble over this ledge. Huh? All right, Tommy, but be careful. Yeah. No! No! Oh, boy, this is spooky. And it's getting darker, too. I'm scared. Hmm. Now, let's stick close together so we don't get separated, huh? Wait. Wait, what's that? Oh! 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 Oh, there's something hitting me in the face. Ouch! Don't be scared, Becky. It's just bats. Gosh, there are a lot of them. Yeah, get away from here, you old bat. Watch your language, young man. <laughs> Gee, they, they talk, too. Hey, Tommy, listen. There's somebody coming towards us. Where? Oh, yeah. Maybe he can tell us how to get out of here. I'll find out who he is. Hey, mister, are you a caveman? No, I'm an Eskimo. An Eskimo? What's an Eskimo doing in a cave in Missouri? What was that Barracuda doing in Lake Arrowhead? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Say, mister, how do you... 
She's gone. Go on, say, we gotta get out of here. What'll we do, Tommy? Let's crawl on our hands and knees through the tunnel. It may lead somewhere. Come on, follow me. Gee, that's scary. What's that noise? Just my bubble gum. <laughs> now, don't chew so loud. Look, Tommy, we're coming into a great big cavern. Yeah, gee, look at the size of this place. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Hey, there's an echo in here. Listen. Hello there. Hello there. Gee, there's an echo, all right. Gee, there's an echo, all right. Can you hear me? Yes, can you hear me? <laughs> hmm, a fine echo. A fine price you're paying me. <laughs> Echoes, bats, Eskimos, we gotta get out of here. Hey, Tommy, look, look down there. Where? Right underneath this ledge. There's a big hole with the daylight coming through. Gee, that means we can get out. Yeah, but how are we going to get down there? That's easy. Skinny, you hold on to my ankles, and I'll hang down by my feet over the ledge and let Becky down first. Come on, Skinny, grab my ankles. Okay, Tommy, I got them. Now, come on, Becky, give me your hands. Gosh, I'm afraid. Oh, don't be scared. I can hold you. All right. Now, hold my ankles tight, Skinny, while I bend over the ledge. Now, here we go down over the ledge. Hmm, how did that door get in this cave? Come in. Telegram for Jack Benny. That's fine. In the middle of a play. Reach up and take it, Mary. Okay. Hmm, this burns me up. Oh, Jack, this telegram's from Paramount. What is it? Paramount? What does it say? It says if you can hang by your heels on your program, you can do it in your picture. Oh, there's no use. We might as well give this up. No, this is fun. Shut up. Play it. <laughs> Here's a swell idea for tomorrow night's dessert. Homemade ice cream. Rich, smooth, creamy ice cream, the kind that will make a special occasion out of an everyday meal. And here's the way to have it. Make your ice cream with Jell-O freezing mix for the best tasting ice cream you ever dipped a spoon in. One of the flavors you want to try first is that swell maple walnut. It's made with a flavor of real old-fashioned maple syrup the kind you get way up in New England when spring is on the way. And it's chucked full of walnut meat, just lots of them, crunchy and inviting. The family will love it, and you'll love the ease and speed and economy of Jell-O freezing mix. Just open the can, add milk and some whipped cream, and pour right into the freezing tray. You get six servings of rich, creamy ice cream with that old-fashioned, homemade goodness. Jell-O freezing mix comes in six luscious flavors in all. Maple walnut, chocolate, real vanilla, and delicious fruit flavors that are real fruits in their own sweetened juice. Strawberry, tutti frutti, and orange pineapple. You'll find the Jell-O freezing mix is the perfect answer to hot weather desserts. So ask your grocer tomorrow for Jell-O freezing mix. This is the last number of the 36th program in the new Jell-O series, and we'll be with you again next Sunday night at the same time. Am I going to be Becky Thatcher again next week? No, Mary. We're all through with Tom Sawyer. Is that right, Jack? Yes, Phil. Then take this. Out! And Polly! And Polly! Good night, folks. <laughs> Kenny Baker appears on the Jell-O program through courtesy of Mervyn Leroy Productions. This is the National Broadcasting Company.